And now it's time for us to discuss more of these headlines and simple keywords with Adam joining us via Zoom. Good morning, Adam. Happy hump day, Lena. Good morning. Happy Wednesday, indeed. Thank you for joining us. Happy to be here. All right, let's jump into our keyword news portion of the day. We're going to try to clarify some of these major headlines for our listeners. This is our first pick of the day. Overseas trip. So President Yoon's first overseas trip of the year will be to the UAE and then Switzerland. What can we expect? What's on his agenda? Right. It will be a eight-day two-nation tour, which begins this Saturday, and it's focused basically on the economy. So it's an economy-related diplomacy, if you will. Yoon's first stop will be Abu Dhabi for his first state visit there as president. He will tour the Baraka nuclear power plant that was actually built by South Korean companies in Abu Dhabi's far western desert. He'll also visit the Korean Army's uh, AK unit deployed in the UAE. Now, uh, the country deployed the AK unit in January 2011 to help train uh, the UAE's special forces during peacetime and protect Korean residents there. The AK unit name is uh, named after the Arabic word for brother. The uh, president will also be accompanied by a delegation with the heads of some 100 companies. So quite a delegation. It is the first time that such a large business delegation has accompanied Yoon on an overseas um, visit. Around 70%, interestingly, of the companies represented in the delegation are actually small or medium sized. Now, the visit is expected to show support for Korean companies entering uh, the UAE markets and encourage investments in fields such as nuclear power, one of the areas in which President Yoon has been touting as one of the key export items. Mm -hmm. The two countries are also expected to strengthen cooperation in four key areas. So nuclear power, yes, and energy defense and investments as well. A number of MOUs are likely to be signed during this trip. Um, meanwhile, on the 17th, that's next Tuesday, you will head to Switzerland to meet with Korean residents in Zurich and travel to Davos also the next day for the World Economic Forum. Um, uh, he'll hold a luncheon meeting in Davos with CEOs of major Korean and global companies to discuss economic policies and investment. Later that day, Yoon will attend a Korea night to promote Busan's bid to host the 2030 World Expo. Uh, this is the first time in eight years that a Korean president has attended the Davos Forum since mm. uh, former President Park Geun-hye in 2014. Um, Yoon will also visit the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich to meet with scholars uh, to discuss science and technology cooperation. So he's kicking off another busy diplomatic schedule uh, early this year uh, in the Middle East and Europe. All right, with that, we move on to our second keyword of the day. Retaliation. So remember more than a dozen countries, including Britain, Japan, South Korea, and the U.S. and Morocco declaring that blanket ban on arrivals or some changes in requirements for Chinese travelers. Now, it seems that there's retaliation. China has suspended issuing some visas for South Korea and Japan in Beijing's first retaliation against those COVID-related curves on uh, incoming Chinese travelers. Right. So Chinese consulates in Korea uh, announced it is stopping issuing short term visas uh, as of uh, yesterday. In fact, these include visits for trade, tourism and even medical care purposes uh, as well. Beijing says the pause on South Korean visitors uh, visas rather will remain in place until what it called discriminatory entry restrictions against China uh, are lifted. Uh, Beijing has also stopped issuing visa visas to China bound travelers from Japan. Uh, Korea's foreign ministry said its policy was in accordance with scientific and objective evidence, basically saying that they uh, did have a reason to kind of strengthen the border um, measures uh, and restrictions of entrance from China. Uh, Korea and Japan are not the only countries imposing entry requirements on travelers from China, but their measures are among uh, the most stringent, something that uh, China isn't really happy about. Mm. And this whole move by Beijing, it's uh, China's first attempt uh, at retaliation. Limiting visas issued to travelers from the two countries will uh, markedly diminish China's hopes of a kind of a recovery to inbound tourism after it's, it especially scrapped travel quarantine earlier this week. Uh, before the pandemic, Korea and Japan were the two largest sources of visitors to China. So, of course, that is likely to drastically be reduced. Uh, the spat will also likely rekindle memories of China's decision to dramatically scale back trade with South Korea 
uh, in 2017, after then-President Moon Jae-in agreed to host this uh, third U.S. anti-missile system, President Yoon, um, if anything, has decided to uh, toughen those measures by expanding the missile shield as well. So it proves more tensions uh, with um, uh, between Korea and China, and especially since President Yoon is siding more towards uh, the alliance with the U.S. as well, something else that China's not very happy about. Mm. This could have also be uh, another source of further tensions uh, to come between Be- uh, Seoul and Beijing. So as we mentioned yesterday, the new foreign minister in China, all the cordial hellos are out of the way. And now we get down to business. It's it's tough, right? I mean, that's why we Mm. have the delicacies of diplomacy. But as far as looking at the numbers coming out of China, it seems that their daily infection numbers are extremely high. Um, We're seeing Mm. satellite images of uh, crematoriums. There are just not enough hospital beds. And these are Mm. the facts that are left for, well, South Korean authorities decide to toughen border restrictions, right? Right, yeah. We'll leave it for, uh, there for now. Cordial hellos are short-lived. Oh, we, did, we did kind of uh, <laughs> kind of expect this, we're speaking <laughs> about it yesterday. I mean, uh, the new Chinese president did express concern about these uh, restrictions right. that imposed by Korea. But as we said, as I said yesterday, it comes down to the policies uh, uh, and, of course, uh, yeah, it, it, it <laughs> seems like more tensions are in store. Speaking of tensions, here's a thorn in, well, South Korea's EV market. Uh, let's move on to our third keyword of the day. IRA talks. So senior diplomats of South Korea and the United States had discussed yesterday on a range of bilateral issues. The most noticeable was related to the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act that hits South Korean automakers. How did the talks go? Pretty much uh, the same as previous kind of attempts at these talks on the IRA. Uh, cordial, uh, as expected <laughs> again, but we haven't really seen any brass nut kind of improvements in terms of any easing of the IRA uh, that's been customized to Korea, which Seoul wants. But uh, the second vice foreign minister, Lee do said Seoul and Washington will work out their differences on the IRA. He was meeting with Jose Fernandez, who is the U.S. Undersecretary for, of States for Economic Growth, Energy and the Environment. Uh, he told reporters that they share the view that the U.S. Treasury Department will evaluate its additions to the provisions of the law based on the consultations between the allies. Fernandez reassured the Korean public that Washington is taking Seoul's concerns about the law seriously, kind of echoing remarks that were made by uh, Joe Biden uh, and other senior uh, U.S. officials. Um, He added that the U.S. government will work together with Korea and other allies on the IRA as well. It's not just Korea that's expressing concerns about the law. A lot of countries Um, uh, are expressing concern because they have a stake in the matter as well. Uh, He stressed Mm -hmm. the IRA is intended to address global climate change, saying the U.S. seeks to help increase the resiliency of global supply chains and promote inclusive economic growth, in his words. Uh, The pair also discussed ways to advance cooperation in the supply chain for semiconductors and key uh, minerals. Um, He noted their meeting has served as an opportunity to affirm the direction, as they put it, of cooperation for South Korea uh, and the U.S. as allies in economic security and technology. Uh, also, in a brief meeting with Fernandez, Foreign Minister Pak Jin also urged special attention from Washington on the easing of what Seoul deems this discriminatory provisions of the IRA. Uh, Fernandez plans to meet with representatives, meanwhile, from U.S. and Korean companies while he's here and hold a round table on, uh, f- with female business leaders with the American Chamber of Commerce before departing uh, for Japan um, today. Mm. If any important revelation, uh, revelations, if I can say, come out, we'll talk about it in detail tomorrow. With that, let's move on to our fourth keyword of the day. DP Chief Grilled. So Democratic Party leader Lee Jae-myung has finished 12 hours of questioning by prosecutors and has reiterated his innocence amid third-party bribery allegations. What's the latest? Right, so quite a a marathon run of uh, questions by the prosecution. Uh, As he left the Sungnam branch of the Suwon District Prosecutor's Office, he he stressed that uh, an indictment against him has basically been fixed. Uh, He claimed the prosecution failed to reveal firm evidence in their case against him. He said the truth will be determined in court. Uh, He is facing third-party bribery allegations surrounding corporate donations to 
uh, a football club, namely Songnam FC, while he was serving as the mayor of Songnam. He denies any involvement, and he also said that the prosecutors who played servant to the government become became that very government during questioning. Uh, he expressed confidence, saying he will win this case. He also stressed that due to fabricated investigation, arrest warrants, indictments are issued excessively as well. Um, this was his first time appearing at the prosecutor's office as a suspect. Uh, prosecutors believe that a 16 billion won sponsorship or donations from companies, uh, including Tusan and Neva, uh, so quite some big companies, was a quid pro quo for favours received. In exchange for the sponsorship, the city government relaxed several development regulations as well as construction approvals. Um, he is currently also being investigated by prosecutors on several other cases, including uh, the Tezhangdong development scandal um, as well. So there's another uh, area of uh, tensions between uh, President Yoon and the ruling party and mm. the opposition Democratic Party as well. It's absolutely politically charged. We'll keep tabs on it. And now that the first round of questioning has completed, let's move on back to the economy section. This is our last keyword of the day. Recession looms. So the World Bank is warning that the global economy is on a razor edge and risks of falling into recession this year. The warning comes as it unveiled its latest projections for global growth. Uh, so we're on thin ice. What's the assessment? Certainly we are on thin ice. And that's what is uh, that's what the World Bank is saying. Uh, the World Bank expects the world economy to grow by just 1.7 percent this year, which is a sharp fall from an estimated 2.9 percent. Uh, last year, so basically nearly half uh, the projection that time. That's according to the latest edition of its twice yearly Global Economics Prospects report. It, uh, if that forecast actually proves accurate, it would be the third weakest annual expansion in 30 years behind only the deep recessions that resulted from the 2008 global financial crisis and also the pandemic uh, in 2020. Uh, the World Bank has lowered its growth forecast for 95% of advanced economies and more than 70% of developing economies compared with six months ago. Now, advanced economies will grow by just 0.5% this year, down from an estimated 2.5% last year, one of them being the US. Uh, in the rest of the world, growth is expected to be unchanged at 3.4%. However, Excluding China, developing countries will grow by 2.7% this year, down from 3.8% uh, last year. And also, the impact of a global downturn, the World Bank predicts, would fall particularly hard on poorer countries. Um, and the report blames uh, high inflation, high interest rates, reduced investment and disruptions caused by Russia's invasion of Ukraine in late February uh, for the downward revisions um, in its outlook. So all those high inflation, high interest rates and the Russian invasion, uh, they're cited in many uh, as, as cited in many reports as being, you know, culprits of these mm -hmm. gloomy economic data that we're seeing recently. So the World Bank is basically saying the so. same. All right. Echoing the same rhetoric. Thank you very much, Adam, for today's updates. I'll see you tomorrow. You're very welcome. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.